Hi guys and welcome to this uh, video on Box Plots. I'm Darren, otherwise known as Mass Guru, and it's really good to see you here. Now obviously this is part of the general Mass course where I'm building up and up and up to sort of do all the statistics and exciting stuff. And this one's dealing with a box plot. Now you may have met it before, I'm not so sure though, but it is so freaking easy and a lot of it's done on your calculator, you are going to smash this. Now if you haven't already done so, can you subscribe to my YouTube channel? My mum I think is watching all of my videos, so if you're out there watching that would be greatly, greatly appreciated appreciated just that click just makes it worthwhile doing these videos and then there's massguru.com where you can get all these videos with downloadable notes and time codes and exam questions and so so much more totally free to sign up um, head over there if you can and spread the word all right so what are we going to do this day uh, learning objectives we're going to look at what a box plot is how to draw a box plot because you're going to have to do that in both this course and further maths if you're going to go on to that or any statistical work that you're going to do you know how to identify outliers have you met an outlier before by using upper fences and lower fences and then using the CAS. as i say the CAS is going to be your savior here because it's going to do so much of the work for you now, in a previous video, we looked at an example where your CAS gave you information. And if you notice here, we've got things like min x, q1 x, median x, q3 x, and max x. Now, those are called the five number summary statistics. Why? Because there are five numbers and it's a summary statistic. But actually, it's really, really helpful to take these pieces of random data, these numbers, and turn them into a diagram. Our brains love pictures, yeah? If we can see a picture, we're like, ah, oh, ka-ching, bang, thanks very much. Lots of numbers, and we're like, yeah, nah, too confusing. So we're going to actually turn that into a box plot. And a box plot has five important things on it. Number one, it's a box. There you go. So funnily enough, drawing a very quick idea of a box plot, that's what a box plot looks like. Obviously, that line there isn't supposed to go inside the box, but again, a little bit more on that later. But all it is, is, is a box with two little lines coming off it, or two long lines coming off it, depending on the system or the situation. So what does it show? It shows the minimum value, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and a maximum value. And you've already dealt with quartiles before, right? You have? I'm going to recap it anyway, yes? So the best way to do this is an example. And we have an example from a previous video. We've got monthly rainfall, and we've got the summary statistics already done for me. So obviously, I put that into my calculator, and I did all the button pressing I needed to do, and out came my summary statistics. And the ones I'm interested in are of this min x, the max x, q1 x, q3 x, and the medium. Now, to be able to draw a box plot, the first thing you need to do is draw a scale. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line there, and there's got to be the minimum value and the maximum value shown on this. Now, because my minimum value is coming out as 48, I tend to go to 45. And again, that's completely arbitrary. Up to you what value you start with. I always go a smidge to the left. My highest value is 67, so I'm probably going to go to 70. It just gives my diagram a little bit of some breathing space, if you were. Yes? Now, what do I do then? Well, I would then have to go up in even divisions. 45, 50, 55, 60, oh, 65, 70, 75, and 80. Now, obviously, in this situation, I'm going to change this to 80 making that 17. Now, why have I done that? Well, it's just because I made my line too long. And to make this video a bit shorter, I'm not going to necessarily redo my diagram because it's going to rub a load of stuff out. But ideally, you wouldn't necessarily want that section there. So, okay, we've got 45, we've got 50, we've got 55, we've got 60, we've got 65, and we've got 70. What do I do now? Well, the first one I tend to plot is Q1X. That's my lower quartile at 49.5. And when you do that one, that is just a vertical line. Now, you, you're not going to color yours in. I'm just trying to make mine a bit thicker because my pen, for some reason, isn't very thick. But that is my value of my lower quartile. Remember that Q3 is actually equal to my lower quartile. That's the lower quartile on the data. What do I do next? I next do my Q3 of X. I do my upper quartile. My upper quartile is 59. And so I would do a line at 59. And then, believe it or not, I connect those two together to give me my box. ka -ching. Yes? So I'm now going to say, so I would label that as Q1. I would label that as Q3. What do I do next? Well, generally speaking, I would do my median next. My median is 57. So I'm going to go to 57 and draw a vertical line. And then I'm going to put my M there. 
Now again, some exam questions ask you to do the numbers, others ask you to do the letters, others don't even want the letters on there at all. So be guided by the question. I'm just doing it now for um, sort of clarity. What I'm gonna do now, what I'm gonna do my minimum value was 48. Now what I do there is I actually just do a dot and then I connect it by a straight line. Now later on, when we start looking at outliers, you need to be careful there, very, very careful. But again, I don't wanna rush ahead. And then what have we got? We've got my maximum value is 67, which is roughly speaking there, do a dot, connect the line, and ka-ching, ladies and gentlemen, there is a box plot. Yes, so I'd put this as my min, probably, M-I-M, -M, and put that there as my max, and ka-ching, there is a box plot. Now, why are we drawing this? Because we get to compare them later on, but for now, we're just looking at one example. Now, outliers are really, really important. What on earth is an outlier? Well, basically, it's something that doesn't quite fit the data. What do I mean by doesn't quite fit the data? Well, some responses might seem a little bit too far, a little bit edgy, a little bit sort of like, yeah, no, I don't think so. You're not part of the norm. So we actually try and identify outliers on our diagram uh, or on my box plot. Now, how do we do that? Well, we actually do that before we draw the diagram. Now, outliers are freaking awesome. But we use some calculations and we call these things fences. So basically what you've got to sort of imagine is that you have a box plot and somewhere there's going to be a value so that we can draw dotted lines on my diagram but not on yours that sort of say well anything outside those fences, anything that's not inside the field almost is an outlier. So any data items that appear outside are effectively not really sensible for our data. Now notice I've done them there with circles. That's exactly how we do an outlier. But how do we work out these dotted lines? Well, that's called the lower fence. And this one here is called the upper fence. And it just so happens there are two formulas that say, for example, our lower fence is given by Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. What on earth does that mean? Well, hold on a moment. We've already seen Q1 because our statistic here told us what Q1 was. Okay, so we can pick that out. But what is this IQR? Well, again, from a previous video, we noticed that the IQR is basically Q3 minus Q1. ka -ching, that's freaking awesome. So we can now work out a value by which our data, if it's to the left of my box plot, becomes an outlier. And likewise, my upper fence is given by Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. Now, when I do this with my students, I always get them to work out this 1.5 times IQR first because it's the same for both formulas. And then obviously my lower fence is going to be the Q1 value subtract, yeah? And the other value, my upper fence is going to be Q3 plus that value because we want to work out where it's going to cut off this data. Okay. Now, as I said just a moment ago, how do we show outliers in the box plot? We show them with circles, or they can be colored in, they can be open, it very much depends on the CAS, I think, colors them in, some people do them open, doesn't really matter. But what you'll notice here is that somewhere there is a lower fence. Now you're gonna say, well, how do you know that? I don't, I'm just guessing. Because we have no outliers down there, the chances are all of my data fit in nicely into the paddock, if you wanna think of it that way. Although somewhere above this dotted line here, somewhere above there, there are three data items that don't fit what my data looks like. And you can sort of see that. Here is my box plot. It seems quite nice. We've got the little square, we've got the lines, we've got the median. And then these three data items out here just don't quite fit. How would we have found those? We would have used my CAS, which does it for me, or I would have used my calculations. Okay. So here is an example of a box with outliers. How did I do it? Well, basically, I just put all of this data into my CAS and then I asked it to do all the hard work for you. Yes, there's no way you are going to generally be expected to do all this by hand unless it's an investigation. I mean, the good news here is if I look at min x, 2, that seems to be 2. If I look at max x, it's 264. I could find the median of 71, all right, by just sort of counting off either end, my 71, but my Q1x and Q3x, too complicated to work out. So I've got my data there, all right? I found my summary statistics. Now what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to find the IQR. And if you remember, my IQR is equal to my Q3 minus my Q1, or my upper quartile minus my lower quartile. My Q3 is 109.5. I'm going to subtract from that 
25.5, which gives me a stunning value of 84. So I now know that my IQR is 84. How's that going to help me? Well, I remember that my lower fence is given by, do you remember? Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So let's do that. So let's read off the value of Q1, which is 25.5 minus 1.5 times 84. I'm going to put that into my calculator. 25.5 minus 1.5 times 84 gives me minus 100.5, minus 100.5. Now, what that tells me is that any data items from my table, which is here, that are less than minus 100.5 are going to be outliers on the left-hand side. Well, basically, my smallest number is 2. So I think I'm pretty safe that I'm not going to have any outliers on that side. My upper quartile is going to give me Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. So what's my value of Q3? It's 109.5. I'm going to add on to that 1.5 times 84. Again, put this into my calculator, 109.5 plus 1.5 times 84 it gives me 235.5. So 235.5. Now, knowing those values, I tend to then go back to my data items and say, right, okay, which now are outliers? So if we remember my lower quartile was minus 100.5, and my, uh, sorry, my lower fence, we'll try that again, and my upper fence was given by 235.5. Right, well, we've already said there is no, my lowest number is two, so I don't have to worry about my lower fence, but 235.5 would suggest now that I have one outlier, because that 264 is bigger than 235.5. Now, one of the most important thing about outliers is, and a lot of people get confused by this, is how do we now know how long to make that line there? Because we now know we're gonna have to have a circle at 264. And a lot of people think, oh, well, I'll just draw a random line. No, the end of this line, this point here, becomes the first non-outlier value. So because that says 226, I would make sure that when I drew my line, that would be in level with 264, but the end of my line would be level with 226. You don't just draw a random line. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. What you'll notice is that is the completed box plot, yes? So using my summary statistics, I had my lowest value was two. I can't remember the rest of them. My upper value was, let's just see what it was, 226. So 20, 20, uh, notice again, that's 226 is roughly here, 226, and that's where the line ended. This value here was 264 and the rest of it was just drawn. Now, obviously, in the uh, textbook here, they color it in, and I'm so grateful to Cambridge for allowing me to use their books. Yeah, you don't need to color in the box plot. I mean, it's nice if you can, if you've got some time, do a bit of coloring in, but, but generally speaking, it's not needed, right? Now, how do we do this on the CAS? Well, this is a CAS course, and so life is much easier, and I'm gonna show you how to use the TI Inspire. Uh, Casio class pad, the instructions are in the textbook if you need it, or certainly online to allow you to do that. So again, what I did was I took all of my data items, which I'd already put in anyway, and I opened up a, uh, what would that be, data and statistics graph. And you'll notice brrr, it's all there. I basically changed this here, click to add variable, and I changed it to hours, and it just did me a dot plot. That's the default for this graph to do a dot plot. But then when I went into menu, plot type, which was number one, and then box plot, lo and behold, ka -ching, in a pretty funky animation, out came my box plot, looking exactly like that. And what do we notice? There's my one outlier. And you can extract all of that data by using the menu. You can go and it will tell you where that line is and it will tell you where that line is and that line and that line. And so basically, put it in your CAS calculator and then draw it if you have an investigation and if you're allowed to do that. That's it, ladies and gentlemen, for Box Plots. Thank you very much for watching. There will be more on Box Plots coming up because having drawn one, we're now going to draw two later on and compare them and sort of look at shape and center and spread and come up with conclusions. But this is freaking awesome work. I'm done. Thank you very much. Take care. If you haven't already done so, subscribe, please. Uh, go to the mathguru.com website and let your mates know. I'm done. I'll see you in another video. Take care. Bye-bye.